Hello Internet, Hewlett here with his brand new Secret Santa Cup. Look at, check this baby out. Find your inner elf. Mine, it turns out, is a troll. I totally won last night. We got, um, uh, the Hewlett's got together for a, a pre-Christmas, you know, Santa, Secret Santa thing. And uh, I, I got the fabulous, brilliant Moira and her wonder twins, Robin and Rebecca. And they, they, I just scored. So I got this massive cup. This, I, it's useless Christmassy, but it's massive. Look at that sucker. I hold enough coffee even for me. Mmm. So I'm back. I'm back from the dead. Um, sweaty and here with you for another Burn and Learn. Burn and Learn, for those of you who don't know, is my bit to remain alive and fit long enough to raise my amazing son and to enjoy the twilight years with my brilliant, beautiful wife, Jane. I hate exercise. It's boring, so I like to learn something while I'm doing it. And then I'd like to share what I've learned with you in the sweatiest way possible. So I'm back. Yes, I had like this horrible flu. And I thought, you know what? Take it easy. Just like, don't be obsessive about this. Wait till you're better and then come back to it. I'm totally lying. <laughs> My wife made me do that. I was, I was, I was literally working out before I was thrown up the last time, and then I and my wife just said, "No, you can't take a break." So I took a break. I'm back Monday. I'm so glad I took a break because it was great. It was like 50 minutes. It was painless. It was exciting, and it was split into two different learning streams, shall we say? Um, the first being this uh, daily episode that uh, Jane recommended to me this morning, not because it was news, but because it was sort of tech and data. Uh, related. They're talking about how they're tracking uh, our phones and all the data they can get for it and there's some privacy issues related to that. I didn't find it that surprising because I've been to things like the Big Data Conference and one of the things that I said at the Big Data Conference was these guys were talking about how this, all this great data they've got for marketing and selling to people and it's all anonymized. And I was like, well, wait a sec, how could it be anonymized if it's cell phone data? Because surely if you see a cell phone, you know, go somewhere at 5 p.m. and stay there till 9 the next morning and then do that every night, you know where they live. You can track them exactly where they live. You just look up their address. There's nothing anonymous about that. So they seemed thoroughly scandalized by this stuff um, to the point of them referring it to as, to as the Ebola of privacy, which I think is a little much. Uh, I mean, again, I suppose if you're completely unaware that this stuff is happening, then yes, it would be a huge shock, but I, it shouldn't really be. I mean, you have location services. You're walking around with a microphone and a camera and a GPS on you at all times. You'd be nuts to think people aren't going to use that. But while I was, um, I was uh, uh, thinking about this, my son came in. I started talking to him, but I thought, well, what, let's, I'm interested to know what an 11-year-old's perspective on this. He said, yeah, yeah, I know. I know. They're tracking stuff all the time. Totally get it. And I said, that doesn't bother you? He's like, no, it doesn't bother me as long as they don't use it for bad for bad things. And I said, well, how do you make sure? He goes, well, just, just don't give it to people who you don't want it to have. And I was like, huh, what a great concept. Like from the mouth of babes. I, you know, why aren't we able to know what, we should know who this stuff's going to, who's it going to be sold to, who we're willing to sell it to, who we're not willing to sell it to. Um, and we should have a choice in that. If you're going to track our data, let us know where it's going so we can at least direct it to people who we trust or shut it down entirely, in which case, stop carrying your phone around. I understand there are trade-offs here. But with a trade-off like that, and if they're worried about privacy and they're trying to avoid any kind of legislation stuff, why not just let us know? Hey, we got this data. We want to sell it to so-and-so to, to make sure you eat more cheeseburgers or something. And you go, I really don't need that. I would like that to know where all the best cheeseburgers are, but that's beside the point. So um, uh, I just thought that was kind of an interesting perspective from a kid's, very simple perspective from the kids, and I don't think it would be that hard to, to, uh, uh, to put into action for these companies, especially if they're facing serious, like, sort of blowback on all this... Um, all these privacy issues. So just a really interesting discussion. I would have to say, you know, the New York Times has to sell papers, so they gotta make it Ebola. They can't make it a little flu. I get that. Um, it was a great article. I love the Daily. I'm not criticizing them for that. But I did start going like, wait a second, what about a newspaper? A newspaper must need data. Like, how do you operate as a company, especially like a media company or newspaper type company, without this kind of data? Like, surely they must be using some of this stuff. And what are they using and how do they pick it? And how do they pick which advertisers they'll use? Um, you know, that kind of stuff. I mean, you want, you want to, why spend money on marketing if you can't focus it on the people who you know it's actually useful to? So anyways, interesting stuff all around. The second part of my Learn and Burn story, it's going to be a long one, is the last chapter of Mind for Numbers, which I am just loving. I'm actually going to now go, I think, probably and read the kitty version because I, I want to try to figure out a way to teach it to, to, to Bratlett. And I'll try to go over some of the recap stuff that they talk about, which I thought, which is very helpful. And, and also it will test my, my, my recall skills. We'll see. I'll probably have to address my, my iPad, which I have standing by ready in case I need it. Um, I also have my coffee. Uh, did I mention the coffee? You to find your own NRL. There you go. Yeah. Thanks, ladies. Um, okay. So first up, when you read a page of something, just recap it in your brain. Look away. What have I just What have I just read? Because what happens, especially with me, is I'll read pages and pages and pages, thinking, "Oh, I'm getting so smart. I can't remember a word. Don't know what I've been reading. It's just on autopilot." So 
read a page. If you're trying to learn something, recap it without looking at the page. Um, they even suggest like leaving the room, go somewhere else, like find a different. Once you can, once you can draw that that information back out of yourself without the location and stuff, that makes a difference. I've even noticed that with line learning. I'll learn my lines at home in bed, and then I get the set, and it's a whole different thing, and my head's not. It's just I don't know the lines as well as I thought I did. Um, the next one uh, that they talk about is, uh, oh, am I going to be able to remember this? Um, God, the second one always gets me. So the second one they've got here is, ah, that's it. Test yourself. Test yourself. Make sure, like, flashcards, any opportunity you get to, to, to run over this stuff again, do it. Um, and um, as you can tell, I better start doing that with these if I want to actually memorize them. Uh, the next one was... Chunk your problems. I love that. And I, I remember that because it's like, chunk your problems like a song, man. It's like, there's a song called Chunk Your Problems. It's not really. But their idea, the idea is like, take your problems, figure out the solutions, look at the answers, figure it all out, break it down, but then put it together into one, into one sort of song-like ensemble of information. So you now can recall that that solution in one go. And uh, it's just a really neat way of doing it. That, that's what, that, I think it's a nice definition of what they mean by like chunks. Um, Next up, space your repetition. Don't, like, I have a tendency to do this where I go like, I've got to learn everything about linear algebra. And I'm just like burning through, you know, YouTube um, videos on this stuff. And you just inundate your mind with it. And if you don't recap it and you don't, if it's all in one go, you just don't, it doesn't, it doesn't lock in. So split it up. Like go and, you know, learn how to use Photoshop in between. That's what I do. Um, or one of those other many apps. Uh, okay, next up they talk about, uh, oh yes, use alternate ways of problem solving, like different um, problem solving techniques. Um, because you don't just want to learn how to solve a problem, you want to know when to use how to solve the problem. I mean, so their suggestion was take a problem from one section or one chapter and another one from another one and thump them all together so that you get, um, you're, you're not just doing it by rote. You're not just repeating the same question over and over again. You know how to answer it again. You go into autopilot mode. Stop that by throwing a couple other ones in. So you go like, is this one of the ones that I'm supposed to be using this for or that? You've lost that and you don't have to look at the question and go, okay, how do I solve this? And that's how you really know if you know something. Um, take breaks. I love that part. Um, so, uh, so let's take a break right now. Perfect. Hmm, what a delicious break. I feel like a new person. Uh, next up, use, oh, I love this one. So they, they say like use explanatory questioning. I say explain it like I'm 10 years old because that's what you want to do. You want to you reduce this problem that you're trying to learn into something that a 10 year old can understand, which actually for me works really well because I'm probably working at about that intellect. Um, next up, the focus. Turn off all your freaking notifications and beeps and bloops and all that kind of stuff. And just focus. They do this, uh, well, I always say it, is it Pomodoro method? I don't know, whatever. 25 minutes. You just set a timer. I'm going to do 25 minutes on this problem. That's it. No interruptions, nothing. And it is amazing how much you can get done breaking your day down into these little pieces. So that, again, great suggestion. Eat your frogs first. I love that one. I tell that to Baz all the time. Um, uh, Bratlett loves his frogs. So what this is saying is go get the hard stuff done first. Like, First thing in the morning, get the hardest thing out of the way. That's why I like to exercise first in the thing in the morning because, which I didn't today, um, but but I like to get it done first thing in the morning because that's when your energy is like, when you're, I feel like either I'm too weak to come up with a solution as to why I shouldn't exercise, but I also have the, the physical energy to do it. So by the end of the day, you have all sorts of excuses for being tired and old and all that kind of stuff. So, and then um, the last one is, um, I mean, again, they call it like mental contrast or something, but the idea of saying like, what, look at me now, this is where I wanna be. Like look at where this, where all this amazing learning stuff is gonna get you. And they're saying like put up a poster or something. I, I mean, I don't even know what that would be, but, but you know, just the idea of like seeing where you wanna go with this stuff because that will help focus your learning. So anyway, Scott, this has turned into like a big self-help method, but I just, I just thought what a great thing. They recap these top 10 learning techniques and I just thought that would be a fun thing to share with you guys. Um, uh, especially now that I'm all excited about being back to work. And I should have a video for you soon. I've just sent it to um, Let's Talk Science just for them to just sort of sign off on it. But uh, it's, the, um, it's, uh, it's a, a new take on my, on my uh, Let's Talk Science um, uh, involvement. Uh, I just, I really want to help them out somehow uh, and, and sort of while playing to my strengths and the, and the things that I like doing. So I'm really excited for you to see that. But um, so until we get again, sweaty or not, here I come. Cheerio! And Merry Christmas.